Hello, hello, how are you doing? Today we are talking about the best possible take on the penguin we can get at the moment, at least on screen. It delivers a brutal, unflinching look at Gotham's criminal underbelly, an underbelly that most shows hide under the gloss, even when they are street level like Daredevil or Luke Cage. While the Batman did set a gritty tone, this series takes it even further. It creates a world that feels dangerously real despite its comic book origins. The show captures the brutality of Gotham in a way that even the Dark Knight, for all its greatness, didn't quite achieve. The Penguin takes the foundation laid by the Batman and builds upon it, crafting a version of Gotham that few superhero shows have had the guts to depict, largely because they're often aimed at younger audiences. Here we see a city that feels like a character in its own right, shaping and twisting those who live within it. This brutality extends to the characters. We meet no truly good people in the Penguin's first episode, only interesting, complex individuals caught in the unforgiving machinery of a corrupt city. While we may not have anyone to root for in the traditional sense, we find ourselves oddly drawn to Oswald Cobb. He's an underdog, but only in the way that the Joker was an underdog coming out of Arkham in Brian Azzarello's masterpiece. Dangerous, cunning, and utterly compelling. Just like Azzarello's work, we see this world through the eyes of a newcomer, Vic, who joins Oz as his driver. This was a brilliant touch, giving us someone to latch onto in this world full of villains. Without Vic, the episode might have felt too alienating. We worry for this young man time and again when he approaches Oz's wonderfully deranged mother or when he calls Oz by his nickname as if they were friends. We want to warn him, Oz isn't your friend and getting close to him is a death sentence. The death flags are everywhere and this is just the first episode. At the center of it all is Colin Farrell's Oswald Cobb, not yet the fully formed penguin we know from the comics, but a man clearly on that path. Farrell disappears into the role, delivering a performance that is both chilling and oddly sympathetic. Oz may be a murderer and a criminal, but there's a humanity to him that shines through. You understand his evil. After all, what other choice does one have when born in Gotham? It's good storytelling, yes, but it's Farrell's acting that breathes life into the character. His will to power could rival Genghis Khan, yet despite everything, you believe that he is just another person trying to turn lemons into lemonade. Plus, the show's pitch-perfect dark humor makes him likable, despite all his villainy. The show doesn't pull its punches when it comes to violence. The brutal dispatch of Alberto Falcone sets the tone early, letting us know that no one is safe in this take on Gotham. He did not even get to be the holiday killer yet. But it's not just physical violence that shocks. The psychological cruelty on display, particularly from Sophia Falcone, is equally disturbing. Though I do want more details on her becoming the hangman. Are we going to see some rope marks on her neck soon? Kristin Milioti is perfectly cast as Sophia. Her smiles and her looks say so much more than her words. Her deranged cruelty is depicted with an abandon rarely seen in mainstream superhero adjacent media. The way she tortures Oz reminds one of Casino Royale, but done in a refreshing, matter-of-fact style. Devoid of the usual theatrical flair we expect from our comic book villains. That is limited to her expressions, and you worry that she would kill Vic before the Penguin has the chance to. Coming back to Penguin, unlike recent origin stories that have stumbled, think Cruella or even Galadriel in Rings of Power, this show knows who the Penguin is and where he came from. The path is clearly laid out and we're eager to see him walk it. It would be disappointing if he doesn't fully transform into the Penguin by the season's end. And we don't particularly need Batman to make an appearance here. After all, these are the early days in his vigilante career. And he has some growing up to do before he confronts the Mafia head on. This lack of the superhero means that the Penguin successfully does away with any superhero fatigue the audience might have. It presents a world that feels grounded and consequential. This isn't a story about costumed heroes saving the day. It's about flawed, often terrible people struggling for power in a city that seems designed to corrupt everyone within it. 
The show demands your full attention. It's not just about what's being said. Much of the story lies in the subtext. You need to watch the actors emote, catch the cues in the background score, absorb the atmosphere of every scene. The diner confrontation between Oz and Sophia is a masterclass in tension, with so much communicated through glances and body language rather than dialogue. You know, a show-don't-tell approach is rare in superhero shows, as they usually have so much that needs to come through in exposition. Well, I guess this is not a superhero show so far, not even a supervillain show, but when it does become that, I am sure it will bake in the exposition so well that we will not even realise. Then again, we already know so much about superheroes and superpowers, we don't really need exposition at all. This commitment to showing rather than telling sets the Penguin apart. In an era where many shows spoon-feed information to distracted viewers, this series trusts its audience to pay attention and piece things together. The backgrounds tell a story as well. It reminds me of Children of Men in this aspect. The brutality of Gotham isn't just in the violence, it's in the harshness of the environment, the desperation of its inhabitants, the sense that this city is unlike any other in its capacity for corruption and cruelty. It feels like a character in its own right, shaping and twisting those who live within it. The Penguin's first episode sets a high bar for the series to follow. It presents a world that is compellingly dark, populated by characters who fascinate even as they repel. Colin Farrell's performance anchors the show, but he's supported by a cast that brings depth and nuance to every role. This isn't a show for everyone. Its unflinching portrayal of violence and moral ambiguity will turn some viewers off. But for those willing to immerse themselves in this gritty, complex version of Gotham, The Penguin promises to be a thrilling ride. It elevates the superhero genre by focusing on the villains, showing us the dark underbelly of a world usually seen through the lens of its heroes. As we watch Oswald Cobb's rise to power, we're not just seeing the birth of the Penguin, we're witnessing the evolution of superhero storytelling itself. Also, do you think Eve Carlo is a female clayface? Don't forget to like, share, high five, subscribe, let our channel thrive.